In this video, we're going to take a look at a special type of series called a power series. A power series uh, is a series that has a variable in it, and that variable is usually going to be x, and x is going to be raised to some exponent or power, and thus we get the name the power series. One of our objectives of the power series is, as always with series, is we want to determine if the series diverges or if it converges. And if it converges, for what values of x does it converge? And so that is going to be our major objective here. So let's first of all just take a look at the definition of a power series. So first of all, it would be of the form, the summation from n equals 0 to infinity of c sub n, which of course is a constant, times x, our variable, raised um, to the n power, where of course n takes on the values from 0 to infinity. So a power series is an infinite series. And so the first term is usually just going to be the constant, and then the constant times x, constant times x squared, etc., 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 in this particular uh, power series. In this particular power series, also, the series is centered at x equals 0. And it's going to be very important to understand uh, the center of a series. In this case, it's because we're basically taking x and we are subtracting 0 from it and raising it to the nth power. Now, if the center is not 0, then we replace the 0 with some value a, which is what we have down here. All right, so here is an example of a power series. And the only difference is instead of x to the n, it is x minus a to the n, where a is the center of the power series. So, here are some examples of power series. And in this first one, you're going to see a lot of uh, factorials in power series. The summation from n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. And so, as always, we simply start by substituting n equals 0 into the uh, series. So we get n to the 0, which is 1, over 0 factorial, which is defined as 1. So 1 over 1 is 1, is our first term. Our second term would be x to the first power over 1 factorial, or x. The next term is x to the second power over 2 factorial, x to the third power over 3 factorial, etc., etc. Another example is n factorial times x to the n. So they're very similar, just whether you're dividing or multiplying by n factorial. And so you could go through and you could figure out um, all of the various terms of the uh, power series. One thing that is very common in power series when you have factorials is you want to write your terms in terms of the factorial. In other words, you wouldn't want to write for this term x squared over 2 and then over here write x cubed over 6. Instead of writing 2, you would write 2 factorial. And then, of course, 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6. Instead of writing 6, you would write it as 3 factorial. And now here is a power series centered at x equals 2. So notice the difference here. Instead of just having x raised to the n power, we have x minus the center 2 raised to the n power. And so you can easily determine all of the, the terms. So this one doesn't have any factorials, but it has an exponential term and it has a linear term. And here's another example where the, the terms are not written out. But if you're feeling ambitious and you want to do something, you could go and write out all the terms, simply starting with n equals 1 in this particular case, um, and write out the first four or five terms of that power series. So as I said a, a moment ago, one of our objectives is to determine if the power series converges or diverges. Now, sometimes it is going to converge only at a particular point. So let's just take a look at this box right here. It says, consider the power series, the summation from n equals 0 to infinity of c sub n times x minus a to the n. The series satisfies exactly one of the following properties. 
the series converges at x equals a. Now remember, x equals a is the center. So it's saying the series will converge at the center, but diverges for all x that is not equal to a. Now if you go back up here and read this, it says a power series always converges at its center. Always. One thing that we are always guaranteed when we're determining the convergence of a power series, whatever the center is, if the center is x equals 2, then it's going to converge at x equals 2. If the center is 0, the power series will converge at x equals 0. The question is, does it converge for any other values of x? It may, inter it may uh, on the other hand, converge for all values of x. And so that would be the second situation here. The series converges for all real values of x. So basically, from negative infinity to positive infinity. And then the third case is, well, it converges at the center, which we know will always happen, and it converges for a limited number of other values, which we would call the interval of convergence. Uh, think of the capital letter R as being the radius. And so as there exists a real number R that is greater than zero, positive number, such that the series converges if the absolute value of x minus a, that is x minus the center, is less than the radius, and diverges if the absolute value of x minus a is greater than the radius. At the values where absolute value is equal to r, the series may converge or diverge. And so we're going to take a look at that uh, in more detail. So we have three different cases. The first case, which we're going to look at graphically in a moment, the series converges only at the center. Second, series converges for all values of x. And the third, it exists over a definite finite interval. All right. Radius of convergence. So this next box is basically talking about the radius of convergence. And it's easiest to see if we take a look at uh, these uh, three diagrams here. So in the first case is, as we just mentioned, this converges only at the center x equals a. So therefore, the radius of convergence is zero, right? If the uh, series converges only at the center, then there is no radius of convergence. The radius is equal to zero, and there is no um, uh, interval of convergence. So this pictures it graphically very nice. We uh, converges at A, diverges for everything else. The second case was when it converges for all real numbers. The radius of convergence is equal to infinity. And so here's the center at A, but it converges all the way up to positive infinity and down to negative infinity. So we're converging for all real values of R. And the third situation is where we have a radius of convergence and an, a specific interval of convergence. So we converges over an interval R. The radius of convergence is A plus or minus R. So here's the center, and we're converging from here to here. So this point right here is the center plus the radius of convergence. Here we have the center minus the radius of convergence. So as an example, if we have x minus 2 is less than uh, 1, right? And so this fits the form that we just mentioned uh, right here. x minus a is less than some value of r. Uh, let me get my... And what we want to do now is to find the, we can, uh, this is going to have a radius of convergence. Uh, the radius of convergence in this case would be 1. Whoops, oh, here we go. The radius of convergence is 1. R is equal to 1. And to find the interval of a convergence, we basically just solve this absolute value equation. So let me go to uh, another color. So when we have the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than 1, that would be x minus 2 is less than 1 or greater than uh, negative 1. And so solving that, we would have x is less than 3, 
but is greater than 1. And so that would be our interval of convergence, just solving that absolute value inequality. And so this makes sense, because if we take a look at the number line from 1 to 3, the center of that um, is 2. Okay, and so that's what I had here. The center was 2. This was in the form x minus a. And this distance here is 1, and this distance here is 1. That was the radius of convergence. So that's what we're going to be taking a look at here um, for many of these problems. So I've got a bunch of problems to take a look at. I'm just going to take a look at one in this video, since I've done a lot of explaining of what's going on here. And then we'll do some more in another video. For each of the following series, find the interval and radius of convergence. So, we all learned the ratio test. And the ratio test is going to be a, a very uh, helpful test when um, determining the convergence and the interval and radius of convergence of these power series. So, first of all, we know that it converges at x equals negative 3 because by looking at this, we see that something is being added or subtracted to the x. The form is x minus a. So if it's x plus a, it's really x minus a negative a. So x is equal to negative 3. So x minus a negative 3 would show up over here as x plus 3. So we know that it converges at x equals negative 3. That's a given. The power series always converges at its center. The question now is, does it converge for any other values of x? So we're going to go through, and we are going to test for um, absolute convergence by using the ratio test. And so in case you forgot the ratio test, I'll go through that uh, again real quick on this video. So remember with the ratio test, we are taking the ratio of, of we're taking and adding uh, one to all of the uh, the ends. So we instead of negative one to the n, we have negative one to the n plus one times n plus one times x plus three to the n plus one, and then divided by four to the n plus one, and then we divide that by or multiply by the reciprocal of our a sub n. So again, it's the absolute value of a sub n plus one over a sub n. And so here's my a sub n. And so now I'm just kind of combining all these terms in the numerator into one great big huge fraction. I haven't done anything else yet. And now we can start canceling things out. So example, negative uh, 1 to the n and negative 1 to the n go away. And so what else goes away? 4 to the n and 4 to the n go away. And x plus 3 to the n and x plus 3 to the n go away. Um, this stays, this stays, and in the, the absolute value of a negative 1 is 1, so that really has no influence. And so this stays and this stays. Nothing for those four terms to cancel out, so that gives me this right here. All right, so now what we can do is we can separate um, anything that has an n. We want to keep, we want to find the limit of any of the terms that have an n, because that's what we're doing now. We're finding the limit as n approaches infinity. So I can remove x plus 3, because it really isn't going to affect the limit. And the 4, the constant, isn't going to affect the limit. So I simply remove them, put them out in front. And so now all we can concentrate on is finding the limit as n approaches infinity. Well, we've done enough limits by now to know that the limit of this is equal to 1. So that means that as we move down here, we have the 1 fourth times x plus 3 right here times the limit of the absolute value of n plus 1 over n is 1. So I put that here. And so that's just equal to 1 fourth x plus 3. Now remember, by the ratio test, how we, do we determine if a series converges by the ratio test? If this is less than 1, if this, the absolute value of this is less than 1, it converges. So since we want to know if it is converging, we are just going to set this 
equal to, or not equal to, but less than 1. And so then solve this absolute value equation. And so I multiply both sides of the inequality by 4 to get this. And then we break it into uh, an inequality without the absolute value signs. And so we have uh, x plus 3 is less than 4 and greater than negative 4. Subtracting 3 from both sides, we get x is less than 1 and greater than negative 7. So two things that we can get out of this. First of all, right here, well, right here, we have it in the form where we can determine the radius. This is in the form x minus a uh, is less than r. So r is 4. And of course, we know that a is negative 3. And so that's represented here. So our radius is 4. Radius, and so I put that here. The radius of convergence is 4. And now we have the interval of convergence. By solving the um, linear inequality, we now have the interval of convergence. So if we put a number line down here, we have negative 7 and we have 1. And so we know in the center of this is at negative 3. And so we can see that the radius is 4. This is 4 and this is 4. And so the radius of convergence is 4. The center is negative 3. And this is converging from negative 7 to 1. But what we don't, to write this in interval notation, okay, the way I would write this using interval notation is putting rounded brackets and a line between them. We don't know if it's converging at the endpoints. And that's the last thing that we need to do with these is we need to test the actual endpoints to see if this power series converges or diverges at the endpoints. And yeah, this is a lot of work. <laughs> so here's where I'm testing the endpoints. So we go to our original power series. And so what do I do is I'm substituting in x equals negative 7 into the power series. Okay, so we're going back to the original power series uh, that we had right up here. Taking that, bringing it down. And um, substituting negative 7 for x. And so we end up with this, with a little simplifying. And so we end up with 4 to the n over 4 to the n times n. The 4 to the n's cancel out, so we just have n. So remember what we're doing. We're finding the limit of n. So the limit is uh, of as n approaches infinity of n is infinity. So this is infinity, so that means the endpoint diverges. The power series diverges at negative 7 because the limit of this power series when we substitute in the negative 7 is infinity, so it diverges. Now let's substitute in um, x equals 1. So substituting in x equals 1 into the power series, we end up with summation. And remember, I didn't put it in here, but we're taking the limit of the summation of negative 1 to the n, n, which diverges by the divergence test. Okay, so by the divergence test, it diverges as well. And so um, that means it diverges at both endpoints. So that means that on the number line again, we go with the original parens here, which means we don't include the endpoints, or it, when we write it in interval uh, notation, or not interval notation, but that notation, we use less than signs, no less than or equal to. If we included one of the endpoints, so let's say we included one, it, let's say it converged at one, but diverged at negative 7, we would say negative 7 is less than x or less than or equal to 1. That would be if it converged at 1 but diverged at negative 7. And of course, if it converged at both endpoints, then we would put in a less than or equal to sign there as well. All right, so that's enough for this video. In the next video, I'm just going to go through a bunch of examples of determining uh, the convergence or divergence of power series.